Thanks for coming down. Uh, as usual, I know everyone's super busy, so um, the aim of the game this evening is just what we're trying to do with everything is to try and give you guys a little bit of um, a little bit of extra extra help, some some additional ideas, maybe uh, make you think about things slightly differently. And um, we've got Merch and Berkey here. So obviously the boys need no introduction and um, they're both being kind enough to come down and give us a dig out. And um, what basically the, the guide I gave them for this evening was give us a little bit of a flavor about some of the stuff that they might do themselves to work on hand-eye coordination. So a lot of the things that we do are specific to football or hurling or camogie. We don't want this to be that. We want this to be for young, old, hurling football. We want it to be something that everybody can take things away from. So coordination is obviously vital for, for whatever game we play. Um, so for what we'll do is we're gonna, we're gonna uh, flick between using hurls for some things, using footballs for some things, using small balls for other things, um, and hopefully um, we can just sort of open, open, our, um, open our eyes a little bit about what might be possible, especially at the moment uh, as we're just coming into or just starting into the all weather where space is at a real premium, okay? Um, some of the stuff you might have a sense of before, um, we might give you an idea about how to change it up a little bit and hopefully we'll introduce you to a couple of new things that you mightn't have thought of um, and might get just an extra few minutes on the all weather. The aim of the game is it's 8.56, the aim of the game is to go maybe 45, 50 minutes. We don't want to kill anybody. We're going to start in here for 10 or 15 minutes, then we're out on the Astro, and we're aiming to have a little bit of crack, if that makes sense. Happy? Um, as usual, just a couple of things uh, more before I hand over to the boys. Um, the things that we try and cover all the time, regardless of what the, the title of, of a workshop or a coaching course is, is that we want you guys to be empowered enough and to be confident enough to change so, something if it's not working. So um, we sort of have a brief about what we want to cover tonight, but what we also want to do is go off script a little bit. And if you guys think it's, think it's crap or if it's way too easy or way too hard, we want to be able to change it up because that's the sort of challenges that you guys are facing with the, with the kids all the time. Um, so we'll do our best to make that happen. Um, and if you guys want to change things at all or have any ideas, we want everything fecked into the mix. Um, hopefully Dara will, will be able to record it. And if we forget anything, we can look back again when we're done. Okay, that's us. We're going to be here for 10 or 15 minutes with Merch, and then we'll see where it goes. Merch, what have you got for us? Happy days. Uh, get rid of the hurls first. <laughs> we can take off the jackets as well. We're going to do, make it practical. So as Niall said, the brief was coordination drills and stuff. So we'll start in here with a couple of tennis balls. The best purchase I made was a box of 72 tennis balls. We do this with the Nafina seniors. We do it with Dublin as well. So if everybody wants to grab a tennis ball from the, the box or the bucket here, one each and pair up with someone. Don't worry about who it is, we'll be switching around. So get a little bit of space. Niall said the brief was for working in closed spaces on the all weather where, where we're compact. So stay nice and tight, face a partner. Just gonna go really simple first. So this is the most basic drill you can do. Put one ball on the ground. We're just gonna go back and forth. So I don't know what age groups you're coaching here, but just back and forth. So one ball, right hand, left hand, right hand. Just swap it up, back and forth. Just getting a bit of coordination in. This is the most basic, so just throw back and forth. Jeez, this is a simple one and we're dropping them already. So as with all these things, if we want to make it a little bit more complex, one thing we can do is stand on one leg. So if the kids are too good, stand on one leg. Swap up the leg if you want then. Jeez, this is meant to be the, the most basic level. Again, back on two feet. If we're looking to make it more complicated again, something we can take away as well is our depth of vision. So one, one hand over your eye. So if we both go with our, our left hand covering one eye and we're throwing with our right hand back and forth, it's only one ball, should be really easy. Again, given we're inside, we can change it up again so all these things are malleable. We can bounce the ball instead of throw it. So make it that little bit more difficult for the man. Still blocking the eye, blocking the eye yeah? Unless that's too difficult. Right, nice. So if we pick up both balls now. So one man, ball each, sorry, I should say and both have the ball in our right hand. 
So we're going back and forth. So at the same time, throwing in our right hand, throwing in our left hand, throwing in our right hand. Yeah, at the same time, so throw together. Yeah, nice. Huh? Yeah. I'll demo the next one. <laughs> Again, if we need to swap it up, we can add in movement. So as we're throwing the ball, a quick little tip of the ground, something as simple as that, moving back and forth, do whatever you want if it's too easy. Nice, right, so again, another progression. So you can change pretty much anything with these and it gives a different stimulus to the kids. Myself and Donald will try to demonstrate the next one. So it's just one arm behind the back, throwing the two balls at the same time. Again, if, we, if that's too easy, we need to make it more difficult. Let's bring the eye contact into it. So looking at each other in the eye and I can't even do it myself. Give it a go. Total. Again, if it's too easy, same progressions. You can add movement, one leg, block an eye if you need to. <laughs> so look each other in your open eye. Look. <laughs> Obviously, you will be blocking your eye with the hand behind your back. <laughs> Yeah, one or two more. So again, something pretty simple. Donald's going to start with the balls. I'm going to face away from him, so we're adding just a little bit of movement in and taking away our side of the ball. So this time we're having to guess, find the ball. We're not seeing it come at us. We're having to find where it is and catch it. So on Donald's call. Go. 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 And trying, trying. So some of the cues for the kids is try to get around as quick as possible and go towards the ball rather than on a few of them I'm waiting for it to come into me. It's trying to attack that ball and go through it. Again, we're in tight spaces, so we don't need to kill ourselves going through it. Give that a go there. Right, nice. If everyone turns again into the middle, so again, you can see a lot of these are things you can just change on the fly. If people are too good, you just change a stimulus onto one leg, take away their vision, make them move. Again, if we're in tight spaces, one that we can do is myself and Donald are whatever, two meters apart here. We can have one ball, two balls, whatever it happens to be, just throwing back and forth and trying to keep that same space between us. So Donald's having to follow me around the room, make sure we're not clashing or crashing into any other partners that are going around the room in tight spaces. Keep them moving, throw them whichever way. Give that a go. Make sure we don't crash. So try move around the room through other partners. And keep that same space between us. So we're having to work our eyes and all our senses here as well. Whoa. Right, very good. Last one of these. We should be nice and warm. So this is one, if, if that's not working for the group, if that's too much movement, too much concentration, again, we can move here. Donald's going to move me side to side. <laughs> I'm getting too, too excited for that one. But again, just some of the cues for the kids, not trying to cross their feet while concentrating on the ball. Again, not snapping at the ball, a nice clean catch, one-handed if we can. If that's too simple, again, we can bounce the ball into the man. Give that a go. So just make sure we have a bit of space side to side. Yeah. Right, nice. Very last one. I forgot one. Nice and simple, this one. This is just a reaction speed one, so put your hands up high. So one man has both balls. I have my hands above. Look him in the eyes. <laughs> Give that a go. So the man with the balls, drop one, drop two, dummy him. It's about reaction speed. The higher you keep the balls, the easier it is. So again, the progression is start lower down. If we're trying to make it harder, keep eye contact on the man at all times.
that's all on the tennis ball drills. As we've seen, these are things I would I'd highly recommend buying a bucket of tennis balls. They're great fun. You can literally do anything. If drills are too easy, the progressions are simple. Take away the vision, take, make them move, take away the balance. Really, really easy. You can literally do them anywhere. Same as outside, you just can't do the bouncing or can't do stuff off the walls, but really recommend those sorts of drills before trainings, after trainings. They're, they're nice and handy. Over to Donal. So before we go to Donald, sorry boys, um, I should have said at the start, one of the key things that we're really trying to do is we're trying to sneak in as much as we can to every station. That doesn't mean that we lose the focus of what it's about, but if coordination, we go back to the ABCs all the time, so I'm in the nursery, we're still trying to work on the girls' balance and simple coordination. Can people, it, does it make sense to people, like, you know that, that walking, uh, walking around where, where, where we're sort of both going back and forth, do you think the fives could do that if they did it super slowly with, with one ball, with one football? Do you think they could? Yeah. And that's sort of the point. The, the two boys here can move quickly while keeping that distance through another three, four, five, six groups of people, okay? Our seven-year-olds might, and there might be three or four pairs at a station, should be able to do it at a different pace. And that might mean, by the way, that me and Merch are sort of going quick and you two guys are going a little bit slower. That doesn't matter, that's sort of the point. Everything that we're trying to do here, we want it to be something that you can make a little bit harder, a little bit easier, irrelevant, without, without it being age dependent, if that makes sense. Is that okay? And then the few other little things that we're trying to hide as much as we can in is the crack, obviously, a little bit of communication, a little bit of teamwork. All this stuff is about reactions and awareness. So if we can sneak in that bit of agility, that bit of movement, what we aren't doing at all is, and Mert sort of, we must have done 10 or 12 things there, okay? You won't get 10 minutes out of any one of those things, but you might, you might use three of those things if you include one or two of the progressions. And that, and that means that you've got a really solid 10 minutes there, but you've got 12 things to pick from if they need it. Th does that make sense? What, what are the, so I'm very conscious of the fact then that the kids will get bored quite easily. So what are the few things that we always do to try and keep their interest? 100% make it competitive. And actually, that, that, that um, eye contact thing, is, it actually makes it, it's a, it's a collaborative game, but it actually makes it a bit competitive as well. Like, and it's a bit of crack. If, if you just have a staring contest with someone, you start laughing. Th does that make sense? So, like, without, without thinking about it usually, the kids will still get their 20 touches, 30 touches, 50 touches, but they're actually just thinking about, about their partner. And, and that's almost the game for them. Okay, we're going to keep going. Sorry, the last thing is, we're literally blitzing through all of this, okay? We're just got 20 seconds change it, 20 seconds change it. You guys will get a lot more out of it, but ultimately we're trying to go through as much as we can here. Some of you guys might recognize some of it. We're trying to give you some new ideas too, okay? Uh, just one thing, if, say if you start off with a football um, for them drills, there's no harm bringing a football into the hurling sessions and using it and then progressing. So that was a one football, one hurling a week. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so that makes it, if you do it every session, Eventually, the progression will be faster to a tennis ball then or a slitter. So there's probably no harm in doing that like, okay, at so a young so age. Like. So have, whether the hurling, have maybe eight or ten footballs at your coordination Or even the, the, slit, the, big, the big goal game slitters. Oh yeah. Could yeah. use them as well, just drop the hurls and just focus on the catch. Okay, and the same thing applies to the football then? As in, for the football st stations, we're going to go out and do, do some coordination stuff now where Berkey will have a hurl in their hand. That doesn't necessarily only have to be at the, yeah. at the hurling station all the time. Uh, or at the hurling session all the time. Okay, um, we're going out to the all weather. Hopefully it's free now. So, it's a nice night. Okay, so just to start, a uh, good little thing you can do in the warm-up. Um, so just put the ball on the stick, and if everyone walks around in this little circle here, and try not to drop the ball off the stick. Okay, so going around solo, and make it nice congested. Make it a bit difficult. Any contact to Leo Donald? Contact allowed. Contact allowed? Well, in the, we'll, do, we'll do that as an advancement. Okay, so once we get nice and comfortable, now we can try put the eyes up, don't look down. See how long you can last. Put the ball up a bit higher if you want, just to give it a, a little peripheral. Then obviously if the Kids are strong, two hands, put them onto one. 
And the final one here is try and knock someone else's ball off the stick. Well, keep your down ball on your stick. Okay, so that's a handy little warm up thing you can do in a little square for, for, for a minute or two. And don't forget, I'll get a partner. Okay, so we'll start off with one ball again. Uh, so one ball on the ground. And we're literally just going to be flicking the ball. Trying to keep it up. Okay, and hold up a sec. Just a little progression here we can do. So every time you strike, you just switch the, switch the hurl. So you're striking it off both sides, so just flip it in your hands. Okay guys, so next progression here, we're just going to add in a little bit of control, so you pop it to your pattern, controls it, and pop it back. So we're just going to control on the stick, so we're not looking for bounce on the stick, control on the stick, and then pop it back. Okay guys, so final progression here, so similar to inside, we're trying to do all this on the move. Okay, so keeping the same distance apart, we're moving around. Okay guys, hold up for a sec. So this time we're going to change it up a small bit. So one person's going to have the two hurls. Okay, and then the other person's going to have the two, two balls. And I'm just going to just throw them to me. You're just going to flick them back. Whatever side it goes to, okay? So try that. Okay guys, so make sure you're stopping around, so stop over the person with the two hurls and the balls. Okay guys, so the last progression here, this would actually probably be difficult, so uh, this is obviously uh, if the kids get used to that, let's see if we can do this, so bounce it off one, strike back on the other. Okay. Beautiful. That's it. I try to go this one first. Nice. Well done. Okay, guys, hold it up. So, just similar to the drills, merchant's down inside where you're just throwing the ball and catching it. We can actually just incorporate the hand pass here on that one. So obviously, uh, it's very similar, so even we can start moving around. And then, as you start off with that one, you can bring in the swap. So just on them, obviously there's a lot of talk about throws these days. Make sure, if you're teaching it, you're seeing that clear strike in action. Um, you don't want to see a kid doing that. Okay, if you see, do that, if you see it doing, a kid doing that, you want to... Try bring in maybe five burpees or five press ups just to get that out of the, out of the mind completely. <laughs> so start off a hand pass and then you can bring in the moving around.
And um, yeah, so a lot of um, drills, it's similar to inside, like the progressions you can do, you can go onto one hand, one leg, you can catch, do a spin, and pass it back, like, it's very, the crossover is, is, is huge between the two, like, so, don't be afraid to get creative or use some of the football drills into the hurling or some of the hurling into the, into the football. Um, no matter what were you saying there? So I was just saying that, obviously, all of these things are completely interchangeable, okay, so, um, what we probably haven't done and we're not taking advantage of and we'll do it in the next little sequences is that you guys there's in fairness there's like 30 of you and we're almost spread out over the whole astro here but there's no reason why what we just did there or what we just did inside can't be done in that tiny space that you might only have here next tuesday so that's a really really key point um and by by definition then almost by squeezing the space you're actually making it harder for the kids because there's 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 more traffic, there's more, there's more chaos, there's more noise, there's more distractions, okay? We want you guys and we want the kids to be comfortable in that chaos as much as we possibly can be. Um, and then the other thing that we haven't actually really introduced a lot of so far, we might do one or two elements next, is, is the other way to make things harder is to add that little bit of pressure, okay? So either design pressure by the coaches, putting a little bit of, of extra um, whatever on the kids or maybe having some of the players actually performing that you that um, that task. So we might just try and introduce a bit of that now. So sorry, Matt, yeah. Down, just a quick question on that last one there where you where you you you're tr where you're throwing and you're changing your you're changing your, your hurl hand. So is that something like that you're coaching? Is this a hand eye thing or does, is that coming into the game? Uh, no it's more just a hand eye to change over. Um, obviously if that would recommend that hand pass over but it's just to it's similar just to just to make it harder because you have to focus on the hurl catch the hurl and then hand pass so it's just more hand up do you do you change hands um like if i give you a pass here now um you might take it with your if i, if I give to the other hand like would you would you take it then that's obviously another advancement like if you EJ took one yesterday with his, with yeah exactly yeah so yeah. um if you get strong on both hands that's it's a huge asset to have as as you grow older so it's another, just another advancement to bring in. Um, you can you just you can just go catching with the weaker hand um, for maybe thirty seconds or something. Um, but I would definitely encourage catching with both hands. It's a huge asset to have, yeah. But and so I'm actually really glad you asked that question there because that sort of underpins everything that we're doing here. Everything is dual sided as much as we possibly can be. If you give the if you give the kids. I don't want to say the choice because we don't want to force them to do anything, but if we allow the kids always to just stay on their dominant side, even the kids that are strong on their weaker side, will they'll pick the 10 out of 10 rather than the 8 out of 10 all the time. We want to arm the kids with the ability to be comfortable. The ball's coming over here. And instead of reaching over here, it's what AJ did yesterday. It's to switch the hand without even thinking and being able to be comfortable there. So that won't happen in one session. We're trying to we're trying to get that in with everything that we possibly do. The coordination stuff that we're talking about here specifically is everything is dual sided. You'll obviously never hold a, hold two hurls like that, but it is actually it is. One, it's a little bit of crack and it's a total novelty, but there's method behind it as well. If you can be if you if you can have dexterity in this hand as well then why not try and give the kids that weapon? Sorry, merch. A good part, and Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> bring it in, bring it in, nice and tight in here. So we're basically gonna try working what would be the, the big rectangle kind of out to the 14. So if everyone just has their ball, the most basic drill we can do is, if we have the luxury of having a ball, is just bouncing, trying to use our fingertips, walking in that, that little bit of space that we have trying to avoid each other so we're having to keep our head up bounce the ball as Niall said every every child will revert immediately to their good hand so if we can call them then onto the other hand as well so we'll all go on our left hand swap to the right left again and right again Okay, one a little bit more difficult. So this time, it's like a solo, but we're gonna do two of them. So right, right, take a couple of steps. Left, left, they may not be able to do it. We may not be able to do it here, but let's just give it a go. It's another progression on top. Right guys, balls back, bring it in nice and tight again. Noel's just had an idea, so we're gonna give this a go. 
So everybody's going to try mimic my bounce. So as we move around, we're going to try beat the drum at the same time. So as, we, as I bounce, everyone bounces at the same time. We want to try keep that rhythm going. So if you can try match my bounce as we go around, we just go whatever hand, whichever is the good hand, because we don't know how this could work. So nice, there we go. Takes that little bit of concentration. If we can then get the eyes up. <laughs> nice, swap it over to the other hand if we can. Nice, deadly. Right, so if we again bring it in nice and tight, we're going to pair up this time, and Niall and Donald are going to be the distractions, so they're going to add that, uh, that little bit of pressure. So if we, Donald, if you come here, if we just drop one ball, we can kick it out of the square, get rid of it. Again, nice, simple one. So I'm conscious that we're all different age groups here, so we're going to start at the most basic level. And the key to all this is getting touches in. So the best way to enjoy a session I've found is to get loads of ball touches. The best way to do that is before the session to get loads of them in with stuff like this. So just as simple as this, we're going to go right hand, back and forth. So right hand, hand passes, back and forth facing the partner. Then we're going to go left hand. Nice and simple. Just do that. It's as easy as that. A couple of touches to get their hand or their, their eyes in. And keep it nice and tight. Niall and Donald are going to walk around, add that little bit of pressure. They're just going to walk through. They're a little distraction. Again, if that's too easy, let's bring in that bit of movement. So let's get about two meters, a meter and a half apart. And let's try and move with our partner. Right hand and left hand. Keep it in nice and tight if we can. Okay, deadly. Eyes into the center again if we can grab a, a second ball so everyone has a ball. So again, just nice and simple hand passing to get as many touches in. We're going to keep the hand passes going with just our right hand. So myself and Donald are going to go right hand, right hand. So it's almost around in a circle. Again, if we need to make this harder, onto one foot. If we need to make it harder again, it's eyes up on the man. Add those progressions in if we have to, to make it a little bit more difficult if we're too good here or if the kids are too good. So it's all right hand hand passes for now. Right, left hand if we can. Okay, again, eyes in here, Donald. Come here for a second. If we need a progression again, so the next progression is right, left, right, left. Eyes on each other, so right. Donald hasn't played football in a while, so he might be great. Again, if we need to add a progression to this, so as we're going, I'm just going to change up the passes. So we might go high, we might go low, we might move them side to side. Let's give that a go. So right, left, right, left. Yeah. Right, good job. That's say right, just one thing, all right? Anybody pick up when Merch gave us that one, right? So can the eights do that? Yeah? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Who knows? All right, this is the thing. Anybody knows what happened? Because that was the most complex thing he's asked you guys to do. Anybody pick up on what you did at the start, or most of you did? Talked. You just, like, you just had to figure out, uh, what is it again? Is it both hands at the same time? So that's what that's where really now we're trying to get re really in a little bit of depth here. It's not just, we're obviously working on the skills, we're obviously working together, but we work together on loads of things. Now, it's my partner isn't just effectively a wall. We actually have to work together and do it in the same sequence and do it at the same time and talk to each other. And that's sort of a really, really great element to the likes of this stuff that we're trying to work 
we're trying to get them to help each other and work together because it doesn't work for me if I can't make, make it work for merch. Okay, sorry. Last one of these before we change it up a little bit. This may not work for the younger ages. Again, with a partner, we both have a ball. Donald's going to pass to me. as I, So I throw mine up in the air, not like that. I throw mine in the air. Donald's giving it to me. I throw mine in the air. We'll just stick with one man throwing the whole time. You can swap it up, obviously, and alternate it. If it's, t if it's too difficult, as I throw, just throw it back if the hand pass is too difficult. But what we're looking for is this. And we're looking to not move out of the spot we're in. Give it a go. Nice, right. Conscious that that's a, a more advanced one, but again, it just shows that we can add any, pretty much do anything, anything you want, and it becomes a drill. So on that note, we might all go to the fence here in our pairs. One man with both balls. Give yourselves a, a couple of yards so we might actually spread on this one a little bit. So Donald's going to be up nice and close to the fence. There we go. I'm going to be behind with both balls. You might need to move out a little bit. And as simple as this, just throw it off the fence. Nice, give that a go. Again, if this is too easy, move that little bit closer into the fence. Right, swap up the partner. I don't want to work anyone too hard tonight. Right, deadly. So, last thing on that one. If obviously, if that's too easy, the progression is we move closer to the fence. We we remove that reaction time. If it's too difficult, we're just going to have Donald stand with his back to me, similar to what we did inside. I'm going to call go, and just throw it at him. It's nice and simple. Every age group should be able to do that. Just throw the ball, shout go. The coach can shout go. Everyone turns at the same time, and we're all throwing a ball. There's plenty of ways to change these up, whether it's to make it easier or make it harder. Donald wanted to say something on that, I think. Uh, yeah, so guys, there's a tennis ball there. Just as, from a hurling standpoint, if you want to pick up a tennis ball and use it instead, so if you use a fence, it actually adds that bit of unpredictability to it. So if you throw the tennis ball out the fence, it could go left or could go right. So if you just want to try that for 20 seconds. And then, obviously, if you don't have a fence, what you can also do is throw the ball underneath the leg. Okay, through the legs, and then the player can then react then. So if you don't have a wall, you can do that. If you do have a fence or a wall, Right guys, if everybody gets a ball in a pair, so every man needs a ball, we bring it back down nice and tight in here, and if we can get one tennis ball as well between the two. Two balls and a tennis ball for a pair. You ready for this? So everyone needs a ball and one tennis ball then between the pair. A nice fun game to play here. This is going to be absolutely dreadful. I'm dreadful out of myself. What we're going to do is play tennis back and forth with the tennis ball as many touches as is needed. So, there's a bit of unpredictability, a bit of movement. <laughs> Let's give that a go. It's something that's a little bit different. It's a little bit of fun. It'll make you move. Right, nice, bring it back in nice and tight. Let's close the space again. Make it that little bit more difficult. We can get rid of the tennis balls. Again, if that's too difficult, if it's a mess, if we have the luxury of having a ton of footballs, you can do that same thing. Although it needs three footballs between every two, per two people, it's much easier though. It's a good game. So what we're gonna move on to now is a little bit of more foot, foot touches here. So Donald's gonna have both balls. He's just gonna throw one at a time. I'm gonna touch them back. It's a nice little soccer drill. Just focused on getting that touch in and getting as many kicks as possible. Bring it in nice and tight though, so really tight back into our square in here. Bring it right back in, right in, right in, right in. Don't be shy. 
into here and Niall and Donald are going to be that distraction again. You can use one or two, doesn't really matter. One is probably, one is enough. So let's do three or four on our right, then swap three or four on the left. <laughs> nice, right, if we get eyes in the middle again. So if one man takes both footballs this time, again, this is working both feet. So it's a good progression to do. So it's one little kick pass to Donald, another kick pass. Ideally, we would... Jesus. Ideally, we would give a target, so Donald's going to put one hand up first, I'm going to hit it to that, other hand goes up, I'm hitting to that. Give that a go. Again, it's working both feet if we can, but again, if, if it's too difficult for the kids, we can go with one ball, we can give that target as well. Right, guys. Great work on that one. Again, if we need to progress it that little bit more, we'll give this a go here. So we're going to both kick at the same time. So each, each man starts with a ball. We're going to go choose a foot first. So we're going to go right foot first, kick at the same time. Nice, Donal. So again, if we need to make that easier, we just increase the space. If we want to make it that little bit more difficult, decrease that space. And again, we can have coaches going through the middle to add that little bit of pressure. Let's give it a go. It might need us to spread out a little bit more. Nice. <clears throat> Right guys, good job. You can see again with that when the drill gets that little bit more complex we start to talk so I heard a lot of right, left, right, left. It makes you think that little bit more and work together so it's a good one to try even if it's not beautiful or doesn't work out the first go. So we can drop the balls, throw them out to the fence and if everyone grabs a tennis ball. Uh, one between two to start. So again, the beauty of a bucket of tennis balls, we can literally do everything with them. So just going to do a little bit of kick passing. It's that little bit more difficult than with a football. So just one between two. We're going to do three kicks on the right. Whoa. And then three on the left. Just give that a go. Nice, simple one to start. We'll be looking to kick straight through the laces to start as the easiest and then progress onto the side foot. I don't think anyone will get the outside of the boot. So just one at a time. <laughs> right, deadly. Can we get one man with two balls in the pair? Again, just a nice simple progression, but this is gonna force us to use both feet so again exactly what we did with the football but just that little bit more difficult because we're using a tennis ball so we got to concentrate that little bit more again right left whoa right left give that a go <laughs> Deadly, good job. I think that is, I'm out of ideas at this point. <laughs> okay lads, throw all the tennis balls back in the bucket, bring the balls in. Something that I'm really conscious of with the kids in the nursery, especially the girls, but, but not just the nursery kids, is, is that inside of the foot kick that a lot of the girls struggle with. I mean, Gab, your girls are, what, 14 now? And some of them are, are probably still struggling with that kick. Um, especially on their weaker side. So that little drill, you, you guys could probably feel it yourself. It's not, it's not a natural thing. It's sort of, are we feeling a little bit stiff trying to... Yeah, 100%. A lot of the boys play soccer. Not as many of the girls do. Um, so if we, if we do something really, really simple, that is something novel, something that's a little bit of fun, something that's tricky, but doable, even as Merch said, if they can't do it the first time. But from a football point of view, trying to almost force that little bit where you throw them the ball and they get it back is such a brilliant, brilliant little drill that, as you said, you can do 
for two minutes at the start of the session, all of a sudden they've got 20, 20 um, inside of the foot, not in-step kicks, before, before the session even starts. Um, I think just two things on all those drills there that we've just done. One thing for me that's huge when I go to training is to get touches of a football. So obviously as it goes up the levels, a lot of it becomes a lot more tactical and you don't get as many touches, but that's the same at an under 16 and under 15 and under eight drill or an under eight training that people can arrive and go through a training with two, three, four touches and doesn't really benefit them, especially at that age where they're looking for that skill acquisition. So something like this for five minutes at the start, they've suddenly got 200 touches and suddenly their hand-eye coordination, their skill levels will progress massively. And then the second thing for me on all those sorts of weird and wonderful drills is there's no cones, there's no none of that needed. So you take away those boundaries, you take away that and you force the kids to think and there's that little bit of freedom in it. So a lot of what we do is very structured and you go here. Suddenly we take that away and we give the kids that are whatever they happen to be, adults, whoever it is, give them that ability to make decisions themselves. Where do I move? How do I get through here? Who's coming near me? Rather than it all being so structured. So that's the value of those, or two of the values in those sorts of drills that can be basically anything. And the reason why we, we start 95% of sessions with Dublin and with Nafina, we've done a lot of it as well. With these sorts of drills, there's a bucket of tennis balls or there's 60 footballs and we do this stuff for those reasons. So it's as valuable at under fives as it is at senior inter-county level, in, in my opinion anyway. Definitely. Would you build it into the ramp quick? Like a lot of that's nearly like activation type stuff. So just I want so the ramp warm up is just if anyone's not familiar with that, it's just sort of how we sort of push the kids, uh, advance the kids into sort of pre-match mode or pre-training mode. For me, that's a vital component of it. So we're talking about activating the muscles as in physically, but we're actually now adding that technical component. And and loads of the stuff that we're talking about there, even though we didn't get into the corrections of point the to toe, you know, open open the hips or whatever it is, like for the catch, there's so many of the catches, the boys do it like really, really naturally, really, really quickly, which is great. The kids won't do it, we don't do it that quick. You know, so Merch is there and Berkey's just started claw catching it. We're now correcting make sure you close your fingers or take a step into the ball so again we're trying it we can't correct everything all the time but we are still trying to improve their technique especially when they're small and um, so we don't want to just the thing with this stuff is and the, the the habit might be this is fun it's chaotic that's great but there's still there's still opportunities to correct the kids technique here because if they get 200 touches but they're doing it incorrectly that's not a good thing either Berkey anything before we go um, I don't think so, no. I was forward everything there. Or... Leave the hurls at home. <laughs> um, and and say, this is the thing, I mean, half the stuff you do before a, a football session isn't with a football. Um, anything else? Okay, um, lads, I hope you enjoyed that. Massive, massive thank you to the two boys for coming down and, and giving their time and their and their thoughts and their expertise. Um, hopefully it was useful. Hopefully you'll use some of it and it'll be up on the website in a couple of weeks for anybody that wants to refer back. Oh, to it.